Welcome to my attic and drawer full of memories. Well, back in the good old days when you splurged on a box of chocolates and a fancy store-bought Valentine as this, it meant that you were definitely head over heels in love. Oh, this one's so pretty with the lace. And it says, loving greetings to my Valentine. Oh, I wonder who sent that to who. Well, the Red Letter Day wasn't just for lovesick couples. The kids loved it too. Now, do you remember sitting in the kitchen with your shoe box and some red and white construction paper and some doilies decorating your box for school? All the while, you're hoping that your classmates are getting a valentine ready for you. Well, Claire McCarns collected her valentines, and oh, what a memory. She has them stored right in this scrapbook. It's fun to look over them. Now, this one is from Woody Fisher, and it says, it makes me happy to be with you, my Valentine. So cute. This one's from Seth Baldwin. It says, Valentine, you've sure got me collared. Oh, they're just great to collect. Well, today we're going on a romantic quilting bee. We're not going to use Cupid's bow and arrow. We're going to use a rotary cutter and cut some strips for the lovers not placemats. Oh, they're perfect for a candlelight dinner for two, or how about a frolicking dinner for six? Well, let's get started and tie the knot. Let's get acquainted with our fabric. Now choose one that has a lot of sparkle. It sounds like we're selecting a make, doesn't it? But we're just selecting fabric for the placemat. Now this is my favorite. This is the one with the sparkle. It's multicolored, dark fabric. And from this one piece, I've selected three others. I selected a light and two mediums. This is a light medium and a dark medium. And you can see that the scales are all varied with a large scale, and these even read solid from a distance. And then once you get your fabric purchased, go ahead and paste it up so you see what your block looks like. This is what mine's gonna look like. And right here, those dark fabrics make the knot right in the center. Oh, it's gonna be great. Now the wonderful thing about it is they all come from one and a half inch strips. The strips for the block and the strips for the borders. Now I already trimmed that torn bruised edge. I have all four fabrics layered up. So just go ahead, line up that ruler, the one and a half inch line. Ooh, I've got a stack. So I'm gonna just bear down hard and cut it along there. So they're all one and a half inches. Ooh, that's perfect. Well, I'm just gonna set these aside because I want to show you how to cut the fabric for the light triangles. Now they come from a seven and a half inch strip. Now it's been cut salvage to salvage. I'm just going to go ahead and switch my rulers because now I'm going to take that salvage edge, just trim that off, get rid of that, and then line up the square up at seven and a half inches. Hold it down tight. And then once you have it cut, into squares, you're just gonna turn your ruler and cut the seven and a half inch square on both, diag both diagonals so you actually have four triangles. Oh, the cutting is simple. Let me get that finished and I'll show you how to sew the blocks. It takes two to tie the knot. It takes an A block and a B block. Now this is what the A block looks like. It starts right here with the dark medium, works out to the light, to the light medium and the dark. And then the second block is pretty close to it, the B block, only it starts with the dark and then it ends with the darkest meeting, medium. You need to have 36 A blocks and 12 B blocks. Well, I put my fabric in sewing order. I don't want to get confused as I'm going along here. So start right with the dark medium and the light. And I just took two smaller strips and just cut them. They're just going to be used for that small corner square. Now, because these are just miniature pieces, one and a half inch pieces, that quarter inch seam is important. So I have a foot. It has a perfect quarter of an inch from the needle 
out to the outside edge. But there are some other things you can do if you don't have that quarter inch foot. You could use a magnetic seam guide. If you go ahead, take your ruler, line it up with the needle. Let's see if I just put the needle down right on that quarter of an inch line. You see you could put the magnetic seam guide right up there. Or you could go ahead and just take a piece of moleskin, line that needle on that quarter inch line. Let's see if I can get this separated. There's a little bit of adhesive on the back. So you just go ahead. Oh, I had that corner a minute ago. Where did it go? Okay, perfect. So just line that up right with that quarter inch line, have a good seam there, and then that's gonna just create that ridge for your fabric to just follow along. Start with the dark medium on the top. It's a quarter of an inch seam and 15 stitches to the inch. Now if you're gonna do 36 A blocks, boy, you're gonna have to have one and a half strips, but I just wanted to show you quickly how to get it started. Okay, now once you have it cut, you're going to cut these into one and a half inch squares. So just lay it on your grid. Let's see if I go ahead and line it up on the edge right here and square off that end with a six by six ruler. You can go ahead and line up that up on that squaring line and cut your one and a half inch squares. Oh, it's hard for me to cut sitting down. I should be standing up be so much easier. But cut along there. Once you have them cut, take them, stack them up, and turn them over. Exactly like that. Now this makes that very corner right there. Now we use this color only once, but the light we have to use a second time. So I'm just going to take another light strip, bring these close, get them all ready to go, put the light strip right side up, and take this piece and just put it right sides to, oh my gosh, these pieces are little. And right here at this seam, I'm just gonna push it up and flat like that. And then just butt each piece on one after the other. You know, if you're doing miniatures, the instructions might tell you to sew a quarter of an inch seam or even a one eighth inch seam. I mean, gosh, an eighth of an inch. So what I found out the best thing to do is just to go ahead, sew a quarter, and then trim it back to one eighth. That's worked so much better for me. Okay, now if you were doing 36 of these, you just keep on going. But I'm gonna just stop with these three because now that they're sewn, take your rotary cutter, your ruler, line them up on the edge and just cut these blocks apart. Now, you might wanna go ahead and press pieces of your miniatures as you're going through it. And the easiest way to press is just to take a small cutting mat and a wooden iron. Goodness, just with these little pieces here, it's not very hard. But see how you want to press this seam this way? Okay, take your wooden iron. What a great day for this. And you can just crease that along there. That'll flatten that out. Then from this side, turn it over and crease it again. Much better than hopping up and down each time for your iron. Now, I use my light twice. I'm going right down these strips. Need to have a, dark, a light medium on the bottom. Oh my goodness, get this light out of the way. Light medium on the bottom, drop that down. Now you wanna take these pieces and line them up. You're working from that corner square out. So they're gonna get lined up like this and just hold on this opposite end. Give a little tug. You don't want any um, puckers right in that seam. Give a little tug. These pieces all get turned over. You can go ahead and you can finger press or use the wooden iron. Just butt them right behind, pull that out. And so you can see these pieces just get, keep on getting added right around that corner square. Let me add one more piece that I wanna show you. Now, another little tip for sewing on miniatures. You've got such little pieces and maybe you have a little bit of space too. You can go ahead and use one board that takes, takes care of both of them. On this side, you can go ahead and just lay them flat on the cutting mat and cut them apart. Line them up on that grid. Whenever you have little pieces, it works just fine. Cut them apart right where you butt them together. Gosh, this block is growing fast. And then, if you're ready to press them with the iron, stack them up, all you do is just flip them over like this. 
you can go ahead and lay it on the board, on the pressing cloth, and press your seams. Gosh, some good tips for miniatures. I don't know, I think I like to do full-size quilts. Miniatures take just as long as full-size quilts. Okay, let's take a look at this. We've got the corner here, we've got this color added twice, this block right here. All we're going to do is just keep right on adding. Let's see, this is going to go on next. And then we have the dark on the outside, continuing right off that corner. Now this is what the A block looks like. The B block is identical. Let me pull it over. You can see it's exactly the same. All we're going to do is reverse these outside fabrics and you'll have the B block done. Well, let me finish my sewing. A wooden iron won't do this job. I'm going to use a real iron with some steam in it. And from the right side, just put the tip of the iron right in that corner square and press from that corner out, first on the right side, and then just turn it over. Oh, are those seams nice and flat? They are perfect. Gosh, this is going to go together so easily. Well, now we're going to tie the knot. We went from getting acquainted to tying the knot in just a few short minutes. But you need to have two of the A blocks. This is the one that we just started on, and two of the B blocks. And when you take those two, you're just going to work with that dark. Put those right in here. And see how you just have that dark square right there? This one goes right in this part. Tie in the knot right in the center. Now, if you're going to make six placemats, you're going to want to put six in each stack and just pull them close right up next to your sewing machine and flip them so that they're right sides together. Now, the best part is that there aren't seams that you have to match throughout it. All you're really doing is just matching those outside edges. So right up here, go ahead, anchor it, back stitch. Go to the opposite side. Oh, they're laying just as I press them. Match this, hold it tight, zoom right down. And then right in the middle, you don't have to back stitch again. Just line them up right here, butt them through, and then match the opposite end. Make sure they're pressed as you, as you iron them. And just zip right down along here, back stitch, and that's the one seam. Now you would just keep on doing assembly line sewing so you have them all in one big long row. Clip them apart every two, and then just flip them right sides together. Ooh, check, that knot's gotta be there right now. And then just line them up this way, and then in the center, split the seam. Go one direction one way, and one the other, and just hold on tight. You know, Valentine's were probably the first type of greeting card ever. Oh, what an industry they started. You know, back in the colonial days, the boys had to have some help on those clever sayings, so they actually put out a book, the Colonials, Colonial Boys Book of Clever Sayings, so they knew just what to say in their Valentine's. And then it was the Germans that brought Valentine's to Pennsylvania in the 1800s. I knew I liked Valentine's, but they did all those fancy cutout types of Valentine's. Okay, that's the knot. We tied it very quickly. Didn't take long at all. Now, to finish the placemat, we need to have some of those light triangles worked in. You take two of the A blocks and you position them like this, kind of back to back like that, and split them apart on one side you're going to just put one triangle that's going to line up like that. And then on this one, where the dark is going to the left, you're going to put two triangles. Line it up like this and one like this. So they make that straight line going across. And then you just take them and flip them. Now you can see these triangles are definitely oversized. So take them and flip them right sides together. Match them up. And again, it's just that assembly line sewing that you would be doing. Back stitch up here, and you've got that little tip hanging out. Let me see what happened to my sewing machine. It's eating that triangle. I knew it would. Should be eating Valentine chocolates instead, huh? Okay, that's the triangle on one side. Open that up, and then this one is going to go on the second side. Flip it right sides together, match up that square corner. Tips hanging off the end, doesn't matter, that's fine. Get that lined up like this. 
Let it hang over. You know, when my sisters and I get together, ooh, do we love to talk about the boyfriends in our lives. All of those ones we wanted to get Valentine's from. And oh, I remember my favorite sweetheart, oh, Ronnie Eppinger, boy. Couldn't wait to get a Valentine from him. It's funny, as we grew up and we talked, Patty said, oh, Al, you always got all the best boyfriends. I always wanted a Valentine from him. Oh, well, a little too late now, but we're still having fun with our sweethearts, huh? Now take these pieces and go ahead, drop them on the iron, press that seam towards that light triangle. First on the wrong side, flip it over on the right side. Let's see, how about this one? Towards the triangle, both sides, flip it over and both sides. Now, to finish the placemat, I need to have another set just like that one. I need to have Two with one on, two with two on. So I'm going to just look in the book. Boy, I want to make sure I get this right. See, turn my knot so that it's like this. Oh, that's looking good. Now I'm going to just use the piece with one triangle on. Oh my gosh, this is like a lover's knot here. Maybe lover's knot right now. Okay, that's good. See how they don't go straight across? Right through there like that. That's oversized. That's going to line up this one. Let's see, oh, up like this, oh, good, oh, I'm doing good. Not straight across, triangle, oversized tips. Okay, now those get added on first, and then comes the triangles, the two triangles. Let's see if I can get these on. I was pretty lucky that way. All right, like that. Ah, oh, yeah, there's the two right there, the knot right there, and this piece, it's just going to go up on the opposite side. Oh my gosh, I wasn't sure I was going to get that right. Well, for sure, we've got our knot. So now I'm just going to sew this together into one place, Matt. I'll show you the borders. Our dream is coming true. But first I have to trim up some rough edges. But isn't that true of every relationship, some rough edges? Well, those oversized triangles are hanging out along here. And I want to go ahead and just trim that off straight across there. From this tip, I need to have a quarter of an inch seam. So I'm just going to line up the quarter of an inch right off that tip on the ruler. And right here, you can see down here, it needs to line up with that dark corner. And oh, if I can turn this straight, do a little bit of tweaking with this, Line that up here as well. Well, it's great if it lines up perfectly, but if it doesn't, don't worry, it'll be just fine. So trim that off on all four sides. Now right here, line it right up with those tips. Trim that over. Just keep on turning it around. Just two more sides. But let me show you how you add the borders. I'm going to add first of the darkest medium and then the dark. Now put it right sides together to your strip and just line that up and allow a little bit of extra fabric up at the top just for you to go ahead and um, have some allowance on the end and just sew on all four sides. Now right here, gosh this is one that I didn't use the red thread but you see that stitching right there? You want to cross it right across there. We'll take a look at the other side and see that how that looks. Okay. Now, from the right side, let's see. When you open that up, okay, that's perfect. That's exactly what you want that to do. So, sew it on all four sides, and then once you have it on four sides, boy, am I in the ball. Have it all pressed away from that placemat. Now, take your ruler and line it up straight across there. Now, there's also a 45 degree line on the ruler. Let's see, let me show you that right along there. It helps. If you line up that 45 degree line, tip that on up there, just trim off those two sides like that, and all four corners, just keep on turning it around, trimming that off, and then you're just going to add those last four sides. They're kind of like small sides. Do this first in one color, and then the second color. Well, that's looking good. Now, once you have those borders the whole way around, you take it, press the seams, from the center out flat, put it right sides together to your backing, and then I layered it with 100% cotton because this is going to launder really well. Okay, layer it up, pin it, and then stitch the whole way around the outside edge. Just leave that small opening right there. To
to turn it through. Now this is going to be like a quilt. This is going to be a birthing a placemat. Gosh, we've gone quickly right into birthing, haven't we? But I stitched around there. You want to trim away that cotton batting in the seam. Just roll those edges up there and then just pop that right through that opening. Let's see if I can get that out. It might not have left a large enough hole. Now, um, cotton batting is rather flat. You might want to um, use like a fleece inside, but I would stay away from a thicker type of batting. A nice thin one's great. Oh, we've got it. It's coming out. Oh, look at the pretty colors. Love those pinks and blues. Now, on the corners, let's see if we can get one popped out so we can get some nice sharp ones. Best way is from the inside to go ahead and use our point turner. Point turner for right here. Go in the inside and then just poke it right out like this. And then for one final finish, go ahead and take your stiletto and just pull it out like that. Now, I'd like to do some machine quilting on this. Oh, probably just around the knot looks great and then the last thing I'm going to do is just take these raw edges fold them in right here and do some slip stitching and the lovers not placemats are finished the perfect accompaniment to the placemats are some napkins and oh they're easy to make especially if you have a serger now with a 14 and a half inch strip cut salvage to salvage you can get three squares out of it i want to show you how close that is this is the third 14 and a half inch square and that is all that you have left to trim off perfect for that fabric use now i have my machine set with two threads for the rolled hem stitch. And it's just like the manufacturers do whenever they make their napkins. My gosh, in, in probably less than an, a half an hour, you could just sit and have them completely done. Now I'm taking it slow right here on the corners and I'm just trimming off that corner just slightly. Let me step on the gas and head on up this other side and you'll see what it looks like. Oh, it's looking great. See how it went right around the corner and then that nice rolled hem finishes off that edge. Now just go ahead and when you get back to the start, you're going to have a little bit of thread hanging off. You can go ahead and use a type of um, fusing that will just seal off those threads and then they won't ravel any longer. So just take the napkin ring and just slip it right in there. Perfect. And the napkin completes the table setting. Breakfast was never so delightful. Served on dishes from the past and placemats made with contemporary techniques. A very dark piece of fabric adds strong definition to the knot in this beautiful setting. A medium fabric in the triangle softens the look. And the same fabric is used in the first border. Seasonal fabrics and gold dinnerware set the scene for the harvest table. These placemats are perfect for the fall or ringing in the holiday season. These are festive in rich burgundy and forest green, complementing the Christmas dinnerware. Beautiful placemats, serene with blue, grace a relaxing table set with antique china for an afternoon party. Now that you've completed your lovers knot placemats, you'll want to preserve their beauty forever. Well, you can if you go ahead and spray a water and stain repellent on it. Now first, take a scrap and spray it on the scrap for color fastness. Now this one, just hold it up and spray it about six inches away. Oh, this is great. Just soak it. My goodness, this is fun. I could do that all day. Well, this one I treated earlier, and you can see this is a piece of fabric. This is just a scrap, hasn't been treated yet. This is the treated part. Now, I don't know about you, but I'm a real klutz with my coffee. Gosh, I just sit down, it gets scary, because the next thing you know, I've spilled it over everything. I can't tell you how many times that happens. Just go ahead, let's see, let's blot that up. See if we can soak that. Oh my gosh. 
See how the stain is soaked right into the untreated piece and then the lovers not placemats that have been treated. Oh, they look great. Well, if you wash these, you might have to treat it after a couple of washings, but take care of them. Well, why don't you add some romance to your life and make the beautiful lovers not placemats.